My name is Ray Morris, and this kind of a longer PowerPoint, it's longer than the Ampacity, is on range calculations. It's table 22055. It's based on the 2020 NEC. This is for your journeyman prep class for range calculations. What do we use this table for? It's to calculate the feeder or branch circuit demands of ranges, ovens, cooktops of equal or unequal values and dwelling units. Only to calculate demands from units from 1 1750 watts up to 27,000 watts. Household cooking equipment. We've got three columns we're going to deal with today. Mostly we're going to do C column. Uh, we'll get into that, but you will probably never use this on the job. I know these things. Well, why are we teaching? Well, you to pass the test, you're going to need this. And it kind of helps you understand what's going on. But basically, you're not using everything on a cooktop or in a range. You know, you're only cooking the oven or turning on the oven. Or only one eye on the cooktop or three eyes on the cooktop. Maybe three eyes and the oven. You're not using the whole thing, so we're able to derate it. And if you got 60 apartments, if you calculated every one of them had 12,000 watt range, or oven, that's a lot of wire you're putting in there that you don't need to. Because is everybody going to have their oven on at the same time? No, they're not. So we're trying to derate it, and you're kind of balancing it out. It's kind of like housing. I mean, you don't turn all the lights on and the garage doors or a hot water heater, air conditioner on all, on all at the same time. It's kind of got it balanced, so they got to average out. Here's the table, 220.55. You've got an A column, a B column, and a C column. And the number of appliances is over there on the far left. And the way we're going to do it today is we got A column, which is up to or less than 3,500 watts, but it's got to be at least 1,750. Column B is 3,500 watts up to 8,750. And then column C is anything basically over 8,750. But the column A and B are percentages. So if you get a question saying, what's a 5kW range or 5kW cooktop, what's its kW rating? Well, you'll basically take 80% of what I just said. Now, if it's column C and you say, what is a kW, 12kW range? What's the kW? feeder demand, it's going to be 8 because there's no percentages on column C. Column C is an actual KW number. So if you take the number of appliances and go to column C, it tells you the KW rating. If you use column A and B, you've got to multiply to get the KW rating. Okay, column A up to 3,500 watts or 3.5 KW. It's a percentage. It's not used a lot. Uh, what I say, and I think I've got it in the PowerPoint down the road here, is basically column A is cooktops. Column B is ranges. Let me take that back. Column A is cooktops. Column B is ovens. Column C is a range. So A plus B, if you take a cooktop and an oven, you get a range. So A plus B equals C. But column A must be more than 1750 and it must be less than 3500. Okay, column B, as like I said, it's kind of, you pretty much say it's the oven part. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, but it's still a percentage. You take, if you've got 10 of them, you add all up the, all, all the KW up, even if it's different types. You know, one apartment may have a 5,000 watt rain oven and another apartment has three and a half. So you've got two of them, they're unequal, but you add them up and do the multiplier. Column C is what we're going to really look at today. Anything over 8,750 watts, it's used 90% of the time because most people have ranges. They don't have an oven and a cooktop. Some people do. Uh, around here, mostly you have ranges. Uh, the column is in KW and it's not a multiplier. And there's my one cooktop, one oven equals one range. Okay, most of my questions on this 
lesson on this class are these type of questions. What is the feeder demand for a 12 kW range? What we're going to do is look at the far left because it says one appliance basically. What is the feeder demand for a 12 kW range? So we find one and we go all the way over to column C and it'll say 8 kW. There's your answer. Simple as that. It ain't hard at all on that part. Look at the far left column and get the number of appliances it's asking for and then go to the far right column and get the KW that's to be used. That, because that's your answer. Okay, what's the feeder demand for five 12 KW ranges? Five appliances, go to column C, it's 20 KW. Ain't hard at all, is it? I mean, that's, that's just, it's as simple as that. What's the feeder demand for 15 10 KW ranges? We got 15, 15 appliances. You go over there, it's 30 KW. All right, what if we got something bigger than 12 KW? Because that's based on 12 KW. We've got to add something to it. <clears throat> and this is kind of where it gets a little a curveball on it. But you can figure it out. It says right below table 22055, there's some notes down to the bottom, and this is what note one says. If the range is to be calculated over 12 kW, you must add 5% for each kW over 12. So if you've got a 12 kW range, you're saying 12 times 1, it'll be, I think it'll be okay, 8. <clears throat> and then you'll say 8 times 1.00. But if it's a 13 kW, it's still going to be 8,000 watts because it's got one range, but you're going to add 5% to that. So you're going to take that 8,000 and say times 1.05. If it's a 14 kW range, you're going to go over there to column C and it's going to say 8 kW, but you're going to add 10% to it. You should kind of see what's going on there. So if you got two ranges, two 14 kW ranges, I think it's 11 kW, but since it's 14 kW, you're going to multiply it times 1.10. So basically you're adding 5%. 13 is 1.05, 14 is 1.10, 15 is 1.15, 15 is 15, is kind of what I tell everybody. You can kind of gauge it from there. But a 12 kW range is one. You multiply it times one, and we could do that in the earlier questions, but we know the answer already. Okay, so what is the feeder demand for a 14 kW range? You've got one appliance because it says a 14 kW range. So we look, oh, we've got one appliance. We scroll all the way over to the right side and it's got 8 kW. Well, we're not done because it's 14 kW. The 8 kW is on the column there is based on a 12 kW range. So we've got to add 10% to that. So your answer is 8,800 or 8,800 watts. Okay, what's the feeder demand for a five 15 kW ranges? Well, it's the same thing. You go to column C and you find your answer. And we got to go up from that. Since it's 15 kW, column C is based on 12 kW. So the answer you get in column C, you got to add 15% to that. So we take 20 kW and we multiply it times 15% or 1.15 is what I always do. If you get 1.15, you get your answer. If you just multiply 20 kW times 15%, you get an answer and then you've got to add it to 20 kW. So it's 23 kW. They ain't too hard or they shouldn't be. Hopefully uh, you can stop the video right now and try to do these right here and we'll go through each one of these or you can go to the Moodle site and answer the questions every one of them that you see and try to answer the ones that that you recognize uh, but if you want to stop the video here and do these we're fixing to go over these all right 
Hopefully you're back. Hopefully you got your answers. What is the feeder demand for five KW? What is the feeder demand for five 12 KW ranges? Hopefully you got your answer. I'm going to say it is 20. It is 20. You've got column the left hand side the number of appliances it says five and it's always good to get a ruler or straight edge to go across because sometimes your lies will kind of fall down and you'll get one off uh, but i'm fixing to hopefully eliminate that because i got a secret i can tell you how to do these in your head down the road here but you've got five appliances and they're 12 kw ranges so we could say so it's 12, we got to multiply it times one. And so we can do that and we're still getting 20 kW. Okay, what about 11 12 kW ranges? So I think that is 26. All right. What's the feeder demand for 11 12 kW ranges? Well, you, as the one we did before, you take your 11, find your number of appliances, Go all the way to the other side, column C, and it should say 26 kW. If it's a 12 kW range, your answer is in column C. There's your answer right there. If it's a little bit more than 12 kW, then you've got to add that 5% for each kW above that. Okay, here's, we've got one right here. What is the feeder value for 15, 14 kW ranges? I think 15 kW, 15 appliances, we scroll over to column C and that should be 30. But since it's 30, we're not done because it's over 12. So now we've got to add 10% to it because it's 5% for each kW for every thousand watts over 12, we've got to add 5%. So they're basically saying you're not going to use a thousand watts, you're going to use 5% of that. So what we're going to do is say 30 times 10%, we should get 33 kW. I get nervous on these because I'm doing these in my head and I'm scared I'm going to be wrong. Okay, you got 26. No, what's the feeder value for 22 16 kW ranges? You got 22 number of appliances. Go to column C. I think it should say 37. And then we're going to add 20% to that. So uh, I'm going to be around 44.4. Heck yeah, I'm getting good at these. Done these before. I ain't going to lie. So hopefully you've kind of got the, oh, here's one more. What's the feeder demand for 30, 14 kW ranges? Be 49.5, I believe. <clears throat> 30, you add 15 to it, you get 45 and add 10% to it. 4.5 plus 45 is 49.5. Okay. I think, yes. What I was going to show you what I'm doing on these. I'm going back. Here's my secret on these. If you can remember, 8, 11, 14, and 17, that's your first four column C answers, KWs. So one, if you can, like appliances one, two, three, and four, if you can memorize those, one appliance is eight kW, two appliances is eleven kW, three appliances is fourteen kW, four appliances is seventeen kW. Eight, eleven, fourteen, seventeen. If you can remember those, anything else, I think up to forty-five ranges you add 15 to the number. And that's what I did here. If you look, what is the feeder demand for five 12 kW ranges? Add 15 to five. Take your number of appliances and add 15 to it and you'll get your column C answer. I'm thinking, that's a pretty smart idea. Well, we figured that out in class, but all you're doing is adding 15 to it. And if you look, I think once you get to 30, Somewhere around in there, and it tells you, you take your number of appliances and add 15 to that. 
and that's what you're doing to the ones before. So, like, what's the feeder demand for 11 12 kW ranges? What's 11 plus 15? And there's your answer. <laughs> I mean, it ain't hard. So you can do these now, these type in your head. If it's a column C question, you take the number of appliances and you basically add 15 to it. And now if it's 13 kW, 14 kW, or 15 kW, you gotta add that multiplier to it. But you don't even have to turn to the table anymore. I mean, you may be on a calculation on the test in motors and you get a range calculation, the next question, you ain't gotta flip there. If it says, what's the feeder demand for 12, five 12 kW ranges, it's 20. Boom, you got the answer. You ain't got to check your answer. It's done. So there's my little secret. You can try to use it, but uh, I feel like it'll work about every time. Okay, let's go back. And I would suggest here, you pause and go to Moodle and try to do every question that's got a basic equal... There's 30 of the same type ranges. Because you get the unequal ranges, it's a little bit of a curveball on it. But I think there's 100 questions in Moodle. Go down there and find and do every one of those until you're comfortable. And then you can come back to the video. <clears throat> All right, we're going to do ranges of unequal value. If you got a 60 or a 50 apartment complex or you got a 10 apartment complex, you know, sometimes you got a one bedroom, a two bedroom, maybe a three bedroom apartment. You know, why would you want a small range or ranges of the same size in both apartments? I mean, you may be able to get away with a smaller range in the one bedroom apartment, and you may want a bigger range in the three bedroom. <clears throat> you know, so you've got unequal value. So you may have an 8KW and a 12KW. Well, how do you do those? Well, all we're going to do is try to get them to a simplified back down to the ones we just learned. We need to get them all to an equal value. So we're going to take the average is basically what we're trying to do here. You know how you add up your grade and you take the average? That's what we're doing here. Key points. All ranges must have a value of at least 12 kW. So if you've got a... 10 kW range and 11 kW range, that's 21 kW. So the average is 11 kW or 10.5. Well, no, it's still going to be 12. We well, got to have at least 12. So if you come up with an average below 12, <coughs> you're going to use 12 for the value. Okay. What we're going to do is add the number of ranges together and add the kW of the ranges together and then divide the total number of ranges by the total KW. It's kind of like adding up your grades. That's, you know, some people, they could not get this because there's like all these numbers. It's like I said, if you take four tests and you make, you know, 100 on two of them and 50 on two of them, your average is 75. So you got four tests with an average of 75. Exactly what we're doing here. Okay, now you have a question of all equal ranges. You're taking two ranges of unequal value and finding the equal value for them. So, if you've got one 14 kW and one 12 kW range, it's the same as having two 13 kW ranges. I hope you can kind of see that. So that's the step, I guess the forward step we're trying to do here. We're trying to find, you take the total number of ranges, we've got two ranges. We've got a 14 kW and we've got a 12 kW. Well, that's two ranges. Okay, we've got 14 and 12, that's 26. So we say 26 divided by 2, you get 13. So you should be able to do the calculation if you've got two 13 kW ranges. That should be 11 times 1.05. So it'd be 11.7, something like that, KW range. But all we're doing is we're trying to take the average of the unequal ranges and equalize them, get them to an equal value. And then we're back to what we just got done with. Okay, it says right here, what is the feeder demand for two 12 KW ranges and two 14 KW ranges? Okay. 
we're going to say we got four ranges. We got four appliances. And now we got to add up the KW. So all the KW, we got 22 twelves, that equals 24. And then we got two 14s, that equals 28. So we got four appliances, 52 KW. So that average is 13 KW. So now the question is, like we had before, you got four ranges at 13 KW. You should be able to do that one. Because we just got through doing some of them. Four, if you go to column C, four appliances, go all the way to the right side, that should be 17 KW. But we got to add 5% to it because it's 1 KW over 12. So we're going to say 17 times 1.05. You should get around, you know, 17.875 or something like that. <coughs> okay, here's you some questions. What is the feeder value of three 15 kW ranges and three 12 kW ranges? You can pause the video right now and see if you can work these three out. And then we'll come back. Of course, I'm fixing to go on. But if you want to pause it right now and do these three, I'll give the answers in the next slide. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Hopefully you're back. Hopefully you got all the right answers because these ain't really that hard. What's the feeder demand of three 15 kW ranges and three 12 kW ranges? We need to get the total number of ranges and the total amount of kW. <clears throat> and it looks like based on my math here, we got six ranges. <clears throat> and we got <clears throat> 81 kW. We're dividing the range of the kW by per range. So we got 13.5. So we got six ranges at 13.5. Now the curveball on this one is if you got a half kW or larger, you go up to the next amount. So <clears throat> what we're saying. <clears throat> We've got six ranges at 14 kW, is what you could say. Six ranges, let's try that. Six times six plus 15 equals 21. So add, like we said earlier, <coughs> take, <coughs> excuse me there, <coughs> take the number of appliances and add 15 to it, and you get your kW answer. <coughs> so you got 21. You got to multiply up times 1.10 because you got 14, you got 2 kW over 12. And there you got your answer, 23.1. <clears throat> All right, what's the feeder demand for 6, 15 kW, and 4, 14 kW? Just like all the others, you take your number of appliances and add them together. You take your kW, add them all together. So we got 10 ranges at 146 kW. We'll divide it up. And now we got that simple question. You've got 10 ranges at 14.6 kW. Well, really, we got 10 ranges at 15 kW. Go back to your appliances. 10 ranges. The column C answer should be 25. Because 10 plus 15, you always add 15 to the number of appliances if it's more than five, if it's five or more. So we got 15 kW. You know, you have 10 ranges at 15 kW. So you got a total, column C says you got 25 kW, but we got to add 5% per kW over 12. So you got 13, 14, 15, you're adding 15%. So we had 15%, you got 28.75. <clears throat> Here's another one. Same thing. 10 ranges, 13 kW, equals 130 kW. Then you got three ranges at 14 kW. If you do all the division, you got a question, you got 13 ranges at 13.23 kW. So really you got 13 ranges at 13 kW. 13 ranges, column C will say you've got 28 kW, and then you've got to add 5% to it. 
These are easy. Y'all can do them. <clears throat> All right. That's the journeyman side. The, the master's questions, sometimes I have three phase feeders on here. But these are easy. They're just two extra steps. Two. So we had the simple calculation and the unequal when we added one extra step. You know, we had to find the average. Well, these were taking two extra steps. And one on the front end, one on the back end. These are easy. Uh, sometimes in a huge apartment complex, you have three phase coming in. And the ranges and cooktops are single phase. So they're just using two legs of the three. Or two phases of the three phases. <clears throat> so on multifamily dwellings, some apartments, like I said, they're three phase. So we got to figure out the feeder demand for those. What we're going to do is take the number of ranges and divide them among the three phases. And then we're going to take the remainder and put it on the one or two phases, depending on your one or two. If you've got one or two. <clears throat> so if you've got 33 apartments and you've got 33 ovens, you're going to put 11 on A phase, 11 on B phase, and 11 on C phase. So your start initial number you're going to start with is 11. But then next to the last line there it says take the largest number on the phases and double it. So what that's saying is let's say you've got 34 appliances, or 34 apartments. You're going to have 11 11 and 12 because you've got to add up to that number so 11 plus 11 plus 12 equals 34 so you're going to take the largest number and so it's 12 what if you got 35 it's going to be 11 12 and 12 so you try to di divide it evenly as much as you can but if you got a remainder of one or two obviously one number is going to be higher than the other so Let's say you got 34 appliances, 34 apartments. You got 11, 11, and 12. You're going to take the 12 and double it. Now it's a single phase question. As an example, I think, let's say we got 33 apartments or 34 apartments. Let's say 34. The largest number is going to be 12 because we're going to put 11 on phase A, 11 on phase B, and 12 on phase C. So we take the 12 and we're going to double it. So now we've got 24 12KW ranges. <clears throat> okay, here's our question. What is the three-phase feeder demand for 28 12KW ranges? And as you can see, I divided it equally among all three phases, but one phase has a larger number. That's 10. So we're going to multiply it times 2. So if you look, you should be able to recognize that question. What's the answer of 20 ranges at 12 kW? <laughs> well, if you do it in your head, 20 ranges is, you add 15 to it, so it's 35 kW. See, now we're going to multiply it by 3 and then divide it by 2. Because what we got is... 35 kW times 3 because there's three phases and then we're going to divide it by 2 because we multiplied it by 2 earlier because you got three phase, 35 kW on each phase and then you divide it by 2 because you're only going to be on two phases so multiply it by 3 and then divide by 2 you got 52.5 they're confusing but they're really not that hard once you do a couple of these they're really not that hard. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's almost like when I was back in the day working construction fire alarms, they were almost so, so easy, they were hard. I couldn't, I, I didn't know, realize I was doing it right because it's so easy you think, there's gotta be more to it. But there's just like the, there, there's not a whole lot to them. <clears throat> okay, here's three questions. <clears throat> see if y'all can do them, y'all can pause it. See if you can work them out. I'd like for you to work out as much as you can. Uh, you can go to the Moodle site 
and hit those questions that's got the three phase now that you've got the unequal ones and the equal ones done there's a few three phase ones left you should be able to do those but if you want to pause it we'll go to the next slide here in a second and we'll check your answers all right we're back hopefully you got your answer it says the first question is what is three phase feeder demand for 32 12 kw rangers ranges uh, you got three phase so we got 32 appliances we're taking and trying to divide it equally among each phase so we got a phase is going to have 11 on it b phase is going to have 11 on it c phase is going to have 10 on it it doesn't really matter you know, I mean you can have a phase has 10, B phase 11, C phase 11. But we're just trying to find the largest number on a phase. So that's going to be 11. We're going to take it, multiply it times 2. So now you got 22 12 kW ranges. 22, if you look on the chart, 22 ranges should have 37 kW on column C. I always go to column C. You take that 37, and this is that last step. We're going to multiply it times 3 and divide it by 2. We've got 55 kW, 55 and a half. <clears throat> okay. A service has a 120, 208 volt service. A okay. service is 120, 208 volt. What's the feeder demand for 35, 14 kW ranges? Well, when it says 120, 208, to me, it's telling you it's a three phase service. So we're going to divide it by three equally 12, 12, and 11. So we're going to take the 12, the largest number on the phase, and multiply it times two. So now we've got a 24 ranges at 14 kW. Well, 24, column C, you got 24 appliances. You go to column C, and it should say 39. But remember, all you got to do is add 15 to that number, and it'll give you the column C answer. So you really don't have to, you don't have to use the table for these questions. If you know column C, and it's a column C question, you don't even have to go to that table because you got it right here in your head. If you can remember 8, 11, 14, 17. Uh, <clears throat> See, now you have a question of 24 ranges at 14 kW. 24 ranges is 39 kW. Since it's over 12, we got to add 5% per 1,000 watts over 12,000. So we're 2,000 watts over. We got to add 5% for every 1,000. So we're adding 10% to it. Once you get 42.9, you multiply it times three phases and divide it by because you're going to put it on two phases. And that's my answer. All these answers are subject to being wrong. So if you get one that you think's right and I'm wrong, text me and let me know. I ain't saying I'm right all the time on these. I've done a thousand videos, I feel like, in the last two weeks. <coughs> all right. Apartment complex has 60 units. Each unit has a 15 kW range. So it's 20, 20, 20, equally divided. Now we're going to take the largest number, which they're all the same. We're going to double it. So we got 40 ranges at 15 kW. So 40 ranges equals 55 kW. We're going to add 15% because we're 3,000 watts over 12,000. So we got a 15%. And our answer, I can't see it, it says 94.875. Okay, size of the neutral, I do have some questions on size of the neutral conductor. And basically you take whatever the KW is and you multiply it times 70%. So if it asks you what's the neutral conductor size for five 12 KW ranges, well five 12 KW ranges would be 20 KW. So you'd take 20 KW times 70% would be 14 KW, I think. So that would be your neutral size. So basically neutral, 70%. Some of the questions I will ask you in this Hampasti table is wrong. It's table 310, 16 on the 2020 uh, code book. I did these in 2014. That's when they changed the table, but 
It says you need to know the wire insulation type. So if the question says you got a, what's the proper wire size in THHN for 15 12 kW ranges? Well, you're going to take 15 12 kW, so it's going to be 30,000 watts or 30 kW. And so you'll divide it by 240 and you'll get an amperage. Uh, <coughs> and then I think you'll go to THHN if the question asks for the different type of whichever wire insulation type it asks for. And you get your amperage and you can say, okay, I need a, a 2 alt wire based on your ampacity. Hopefully, that's the reason I got ampacity first. That way you can know it and know how to do these. And that's the end of the slide. Man, we've gone and done a lot today. <clears throat> but this, like I said, this right here, you're not going to do a lot of these on the job. Probably never. This is basically for the journeyman test. I hope that little secret I gave you will teach you a little bit. I mean, really on column C, you don't have to, you don't have to go to that table because I've got it in my head. You give me a column C type question, I can do it in my head using a calculator if I have to do some percentages that, you know, I obviously can't do all of them in my head. <clears throat> but column A and B, you can use that Tom Henry book you're using and learn them, uh, but there's very few of those. But hopefully you had a good lesson here. I know this is a long one. I hope that you paused it and did some of them and then come back and did the unequal ones and then come back and did the three phase one did this in three parts. But if you got any questions, you can holler at me and we'll answer all we can. All right. Talk to y'all later.